Well, hi guys. It is another spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where your old collapsitarian sitting out here and enjoying a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in the collapse of uh, civilization and the planet. That would make it Sunday, February 27, 2022. So I guess this is kind of my, I don't know, is this kind of an anti or an inverse doomsday sermon? I guess I, I started on this roll. On Friday night, I brought you this uh, a, a, a video snippet from this unbelievably clueless moron uh, you, you, you know the guy I, I you know I hardly want to mention this person's name this, this, this absolute moron uh, Jordan Peterson you know talking about how the biggest problem facing this planet is there are not enough people on planet earth and then of course, yesterday was my doomsday sermon. I mean, I'm sorry, yesterday was my hopium roundup where I started off with one story from uh, that apocalyptimist anti-doomer Michael Mann just claiming that, uh, you know, go back to sleep, that we can stop the climate catastrophe whenever we want to. And then that story from the New York Times about how we can save the planet by paving the planet. Pave the planet to save the planet. And of course, to the backdrop of airboats going on in the background. So this, the story I'm about ready to read today was actually going to be part of my apocalyptimism roundup rant but uh, after giving it a second reading I thought it deserved a special place in the halls of idiocy right right here in the mainstream media and I guess I'm just starting to chronicle the backlash against the doomers uh, that, that this unbelievable torrent of uh, misinformation, disinformation, and misinformation going into overdrive on the mainstream media. Just basically taking everything that I talk about on this channel and all of my colleagues down here in the Doomosphere have been talking about for how many years, uh, how many ecologists uh, you know, trying to bring this message out and this outpouring that I'm noticing just, just here really since 2022 began, an unbelievable outpouring of contempt against anybody pointing out you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. The, the, you can just be sure that as the the obvious effects against this planet of trying to have infinite infinite growth on a finite planet begins to become more and more obvious you, the you are going to hear the shrill braying ignorance of the idiocracy reaching a screeching crescendo as people trying to deny that you cannot have infinite growth on a, on a finite planet. And I'm not just talking climate change deniers. I'm, I'm talking climate change deniers, overpopulation deniers, six mass extinction deniers, uh, the, the whole gamut, these collapse deniers. And uh, so I found this absolutely glorious example right here in the mainstream media a couple of days ago. 
not surprisingly from uh, from Fortune magazine. But before I even get into that, I want to share with you a comment that showed up here on Collapse Chronicles, I think within the, ha in the last hour. The last one hour, I have received one of the most, perhaps the single most ignorant comment I have ever received at Collapse Chronicles. And the hilariously ironic thing about it is that a whole lot of the commentary could be exactly what I would be saying uh, to any clueless moron uh, spouting, uh, you know, spouting the, the shit rolling out of, I, I believe this is a woman's mouth. This is one of a Jordan Peterson ass licker. A, uh, a Jordan Peterson ass-licking toady calling, well, it has a picture of a woman calling herself Asdorathos Lechain. Take it away, Asdorathos. And tell us why doomers are imbeciles. M Malthusianism was debunked in the 1800s. I, I, I love it. Malthusianism was, was debunked in a century when there were about one to two billion people on the planet. So right off, the, the first statement out of her mouth just disproving her uh, ignorance. Malthusianism was debunked in the 1800s, calling people moron who know more than you doesn't look too good, talking about me calling Jordan Peterson a, uh, a, a moron uh, for claiming the biggest problem facing the planet is there are not enough people on it. So anyone calling a person making that claim uh, calling anyone making that claim who know more than you doesn't look too good. <clears throat> Catastrophism is used <coughs> to sell fascism through fear. Obviously the woman has no clue what the word catastrophism or fascism means to make that ignorant statement. <clears throat> and then we get back to one of Alex Jones's standby. <clears throat> the entire population of the earth could fit into a corner of Texas using modern technology comfortably, not future tech that we can and will develop. Yes, the old fitting the entire population of the world into a corner of Texas completely failing to understand the most rudimentary concept of the ecological footprint. This is one of the most egregious talking points of the idiocracy Ever, that, that I have e ever encountered the old, uh, and now it's a corner of Texas. You are basing your idiotic fear delusion on not having read what anyone open to arguments and evidence will have seen. This is, you know, someone agreeing with, with, uh, w with Jordan Peterson if, if, if anybody deserves the criticism, you are basing your idiotic fear delusion that the biggest problem facing the planet is there's not enough people on it, uh, on not having read what anyone open to arguments and evidence will have seen. Catastrophists have been debunked, not just anthropogenic global warming, global warming, but 
Malthusianism and nuclear winter as well. So I guess she's saying go ahead and have a nuclear war. Uh, go ahead and have one uh, because it will only affect, you know, the people who who's get bombed directly. There is no such thing as a nuclear winter. All right, and then uh, my favorite line, in the age of enlightenment, ignorance is a choice. Stop making it, says the defender of Jordan Peterson. You are in a bubble. Stop resting your ego on a bed of outrage and question your dumbass sheep beliefs, says the uh, apologist for a clueless moron thinking the biggest catastrophe facing this planet is there are not enough people on it. My response to this moron, I must say that was quite possibly the single most ignorant comment I have ever read on the internet. The very fact that clueless morons such as yourself are walking the planet today and no doubt breeding, thereby lowering the net global IQ is one of the primary reasons that catastrophists are so directly spot on. I hope you are older than 50, so maybe only your children will have to suffer the horrible death that you have inflicted upon them by bringing them into this world while your own ignoramus ass will only have the screen door just whack you on your way out of here. And uh, so anyway, it is really, I'd say, you know, as I was pointing out in that uh, video clip of uh, Jordan Peterson uh, that had 1.7 million views and 67 thumbs up, the, the, the true horror of this, the true catastrophe in this is not so much the single moron Jordan Peterson, but it's the 67,000 people thumbing up his uh, comment essentially that the biggest catastrophe facing this planet is that there are not enough people on it. But anyway, uh, that is all a very long preamble to today's can kind of uh, reverse uh, doomer uh, doomsday sermon from this planet eating some sort of corporate whore PR flack by the name of Alex Vestal. Alex Vestal and Fortune magazine being shared on uh, Yahoo News is going to tell us why corporations, not governments, can create a better world. And I love his opening, his opening phrase, in the power struggle between corporations and nations, in the power struggle between corporations and nations. Already, the guy has proven himself to be an unbelievably clueless moron. To sit here and act like there is a power, str a struggle between corporations and nations. There is a reason we call it the global corporatocracy. It, 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 you know, the, the very idea of fascism is basically governments being controlled by corporations. Is, I mean, that's an oversimplification. What 99% of the people calling doomers fascist uh, don't understand is, is 
is my definition of fascism, okay, my working definition of fascism, anyway, is the, is governments taking, I'm sorry, corporations taking over governments. Uh, as I was talking about in that pave the planet to save the planet, how these asphalt industry executives, these asphalt industry executives convincing the Biden administration to hand them a check for $350 billion to save the planet by paving the planet. This is an, a glorious example of the global corporatocracy. This is fascism in action. The asphalt industry lobbyists getting $350 billion while mass transit lobbyists picked up 19. Anyway, so right off Houston we have a problem so this entire which is not a very long sermon this entire essay is based on a bullshit premise that there is a power struggle between corporations and nations which is uh, like saying I don't know there's a power struggle between, uh, I, I, oh God, I have to come up. I, I, I can't even think of uh, a, a, a power struggle between, uh, oh God. Anyway, I'm, I'm, uh, this, this is why some people write their rants down. I'm sure I will think of something clever. Uh, anyway, in the power struggle, between corporations and nations, I am rooting for the greedy sociopaths, and I already don't know which side he's rooting for, I am rooting for the greedy sociopaths stealing sovereignty from political leaders, and it is not because of some Reaganite fetishization of enterprise or because I believe the hagiographies of business tycoons. I had to look up the word hagiography, you know, find out, you know, about these bloated, uh, you know, talking about how some uh, vile, evil planet eater is some great kind of guy. You know, every time one of these war criminals dies, uh, who was the last war criminal we lost? Was it Colin Powell? You know, every time one of these corporate whore war criminals dies, uh, the mainstream media comes out acting like, uh, I, I, I don't know, St. Francis of Assisi just died. Anyway, and then, uh, well, he starts off making absolute perfect sense. <clears throat> Corporations are some of the most reviled institutions in America and a favorite punching bag for populists on the left and the right alike, who use the word corporate as a pejorative term. It's nothing new. In the 1950s, people expressed dislike for the Yankees by comparing them to U.S. Steel. The animus is not completely undeserved. Many corporations have major faults. They contribute to climate change, addiction, and health crises. Their negligence and greed have killed people and will do so again. Well, people and uh, entire species of fellow earthlings, not to mention entire ecosystems being obliterated off the face of the planet is why the animus is not completely undeserved. Corporations supplied despots with weapons and sponsored coups. Again, the military industrial complex, the corporate whores 
uh, in bed with the U.S. military. That uh, have supplied despots with weapons and sponsored coups. They have been ruthless to employees, customers, and communities. For every sin cited by an anti-corporate by anti-corporate activist, I am happy to plead guilty on corporate. America's behalf. There you go. Thank you for at least some refreshing honesty by a corporate whore offering to plead guilty to the corporate crimes against humanity and the planet. Yet, when I think of realistically addressing the biggest problems for my kids' generation, such as climate change, pandemics, hunger, and inequality, I see corporations, not governments or non-governmental organizations, as the likelier agent of change. Yes, like the agent orange of change. Corporations and their investors are becoming more committed to a better tomorrow. While most nations, you know, in the pockets of the corporations, are paralyzed and unable to deal even with their own existential challenges, usually as a direct result of corporate malfeasance. Whether a business sells to consumers hires young talent, or tries to attract capital, success is increasingly constrained by a need to create demonstrable positive social impact. Impact data, meaning social environmental impact data, is getting better. Greenwashing, greenwashing, is getting harder. There you go. Corporate greenwashing is getting harder. Let's see, we have the asphalt industry, their lobbyists get $350 billion from that little greeny, clueless moron lefty Joe Biden to pave the planet to save the planet with the New York Times cheering them on. Greenwashing is getting harder. Uh-huh. And executives in charge in many companies are accelerating their efforts. I bet they are accelerating their efforts, their efforts to uh, dig bunkers in New Zealand and fly to Mars. Meanwhile, the world's nations marked 15 consecutive years of increased authoritarianism and the US. And the US. Its worst year for voter suppression a war of global consequences has now begun in Ukraine, which again, as much as I'm trying to avoid this uh, latest uh, distraction, I'm still pretty sure this war in U Ukraine is about a gas pipeline. Uh, I, I, am, I am, without even studying, well, the gas pipeline and the usual resources. Uh, you better believe the global corporatocracy is, uh, is who is running the war in Ukraine, uh, in, in the military industrial complex, the, the whole bit, yes. A war of global consequences has begun in UK, re, Ukraine, which has nothing to do with corporations, yes. 
if corporate security was breached for five years, as was the U.S. political debate by Russian disinformation, would they give the hackers a stern talking to without fixing the vulnerability? If a business saw an existential crisis looming, would it do absolutely nothing about it? If a business saw an existential crisis looming, would it do absolutely nothing about it? It would do everything in its power to capitalize, to make money off the existential crisis. What was Brother Basil just saying? Don't let any good crisis go to waste. Uh, the global corporatocracy created the existential crisis of the collapse of a planet uh, and is not just not doing anything about it but is putting the pedal to the metal to bring the planet into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. All right. Of course, of course not. But that is exactly what our paralyzed and ineffective governments are doing while corporations are reinventing themselves. Yes, with these various uh, bullshit governance structures, uh, which we don't... Uh, get into as easy a punching bag as corporations are their mistakes have less collateral damage it, it's, it's not even so much their mistakes as as their successes it's both their successes and their mistakes uh, it, it, it's the direct damage and the collateral damage. Their mistakes have less collateral damage. The body count difference between purely private sector sins and government-led and complicit malfeasance is several orders of magnitude. Oh, Jesus. This will not change in an impact-driven world. An unjust firing is bad, but it's not unjust imprisonment. Y y you know, for like all of those people I'm reporting on uh, in Manga Bay every year, all of those uh, environmental activists going up against these planet-eating corporations. Uh, they are getting the governments of all of these countries, obviously, who have the interest of the corporations over their own citizens and imprisoning them. Anybody going up against these corporations will find themselves in prison or dead. Cringe-worthy training sessions are not re-education camps. Cancellation is not execution. The path to a better world through corporate action will be less painful than a revolution or a war. Yes, the path to a better world through corporate action. There you go. Pave the planet to save the planet. Better living through chemistry. It is time to reclaim the word corporate. Today, it stands for greedy, short-sighted, and sociopathic. In a generation, it could stand for enlightened, responsive, and responsible, but only if we ensure 
higher standards of accountability in all our roles as consumers, investors, and employees. Yes, it is the consumers and employees fault. Seek out and use the data that measures real impact and not just outputs or dollars spent. Use that data to choose what and where you buy. Make that decision public. This is not just virtue signaling. It reminds big business spying on you through social media that impact matters. This is not virtue, virtue signaling. It reminds big business spying on you through social media that impact matters. Yes. When looking to address a big social problem, don't just write to your congressman. Contact your latte vendor. Yes, when looking to address a big social problem, contact your latte vendor. More than 80% of us cannot meaningfully replace our political rep representatives, but suppliers can be changed. When choosing your next job, assess the employer's commitments to change and their follow through. Doubly so if you are a superstar getting recruited by a dozen companies. When John Lennon said, imagine there's no countries, he did not include corporations. How about when John Lennon said, look at all the little piggies digging in the dirt or rolling in the dirt. Look at all the little piggies in their starched white shirts. Or is that? Was that Lennon or was that McCartney off the White Album, the, his song, Piggies? Anyway, John Lennon never said, imagine there's no corporations. Yes, maybe someday we will even wind up in the diamond age where we select governments like we select employee, employers or vendors and that would not be the worst of futures. <laughs> oh, God. And you wonder why I am a catastrophist. Can't imagine uh, why I am a catastrophist. But anyway, guys. I've got to wrap this up because i got to get back down on my hands and knees and start. I've got 312 screws just screwing my kitchen floor to the floorboards. Just the floorboards is 312 screws I need to take out out of the how many hundreds of uh, screws. I highly suggest you get unscrewed while you still can. Bye, guys.